Conversations with Frank Jordan and the Earth Mind Think Tank Group. We take requests for healings in the second hour. simply wish to make a healing request, please type into the chat room on wolfspiritradio.com with the name of the person, the location, and the condition that the person needs healing. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. It's the 14th of September 2014. 14, 9, 14, we've managed to make it here. Nothing's blown up. Hey, Frank, how are you doing, my friend? Oh, doing very well. We were just discussing before the show that, that there's so many things happening. The world is right on the, the, the verge of a tremendous transition in a lot of ways, and I think it's it spiritually as, as much as in the financial world. And uh, so I invited the group tonight to add any new things or to contribute anything new uh, that, that in awareness that we can discuss and kick around. And we certainly invite you also because you're in con- contact with many people who who uh, have some enticing new concepts and of course we want we don't want any foo foo <laughs> woo woo land stuff we want just good hard factual experiential information that we can apply to ourselves and and to our reality and to help further the reality of, of in the evolution of the fourth dimension and all that so, good evening. JP? Good evening, Frank. How are you doing? Um, all right. Um, do you have any new things that your, your uh, radio hosts have been discussing? Any new topics that might be of interest to us that we can kick around? Hmm, new topics. Always, oh, always oh. with the idea of stimulating Stephen to come through and and what he might want to. Well, um, well, God, I uh, quite a few. I mean, like you say, there's a lot going on in the world, but a lot of it is distraction. Um, and really, I'd like to, I'd like to get back to a place of unity and understanding um, that is free from a sense of blame, um, so that everybody can like start getting on again and you know what stops what stops people from making peace what stops people from from creating their own reality instead of responding or reacting to the reality that's created by others is that your question you could say that yeah well I mean except you have to also have the uh, I suppose the intent of peace you know how how do we make peace not war Hmm. Well, how can we stop the people I mean I don't want war I mean I didn't vote for it I didn't ask for it I don't buy the products of the companies that do it but it still happens the how problem do I influence is, that reality then the problem is that you're tied into the corporate system around the world that has to manufacture profit for its shareholders and for the people as the profits pass upon the the uh, that pyramid of power up to the five percent that control the world and so uh, since they're pulling the strings and creating the wars to incite more profit and then generate more income and and through their shareholders and ultimately to themselves <clears throat> and that being their source of power how do you how do you break this monopoly of us uh, generally in the in the evolving worlds needing products things that are manufactured <clears throat> and by fewer and fewer people so that the power of con- is concentrated in into uh, into the hands of less and less people all the time but um how do we do it well we discussed this a little bit with george green and his work and uh, the basic concepts of the the four uh, the four laws of the universe and and um 
That's a good place to start. It, it all starts with us because if, if we change and shift our, our consciousness, our need <clears throat> away from being in this competitive world of keeping up with the Joneses and simplify our lives and what we have to do to survive and make a living and uh, make it a more of a lateral consciousness in dominion rather than this full-blown world of domination we exist in. The latter world of dominion is you don't worry about the government supporting you or having a job necessarily. What you worry about is creating, nurturing and support in the community from each other. And that nurturing, (coughs) nurturing support can go down to the level of creating and manufacturing the things uh, not through corporate management, but through management of, of people within the organization that's creating and producing something. And so as, as we spread that income back laterally into their communities, the communities will all do better and the income won't just always pass upward and we'll always be out of a job and we'll always be in debt because we can't get ahead of the game. Does that sound logical? That sounds, well, it doesn't sound uh, very fair, does it? <laughs> very fair? <laughs> does Dominion sound fair? Sounds much better. Yeah. Let's hear from the rest of the group. Uh, is there any, uh, any contributions tonight concerning all of that? My- I, I think that it has a lot to do with people's egos and how they've been programmed. Um, thinking back to me, I'm in my 50s, and so TEV was just basically starting, and so I'll say that my generation was the first generation that, or one of the first generations that um, corporate commercialism started doing their practice and seeing what would work and what does not work. And they're getting more refined on how they do the mind control with commercials, call it TV, print, sound, whatever. And they know what words to use, what colors to use, how to stimulate this emotion in you and that emotion in you and this feeling, which in a sense also gets your ego involved. And so you forget to think for yourself and you go along with what you're being told. Mm Mm-hmm. Precisely. Mike, do you have any insights in how we can deregulate the corporate world and, and get the same functions of productivity down into the common man? Well, I do. It seems like there's kind of another wave of, uh, you know, an attempt to uh, um, indoctrinate everybody, uh, you know, reinforce the old paradigms and... Uh, I don't know. There's something really odd about it. I noticed that they're advertising a new TV series, and it's called Madam Secretary. And it's about this wonderful, heroic Secretary of State who's going to, you know, change everything and come in as an outsider. And I I just, somehow I think they're trying to glorify Hillary Clinton, but I don't know how. (laughs) But I I think that it just, it just seems like, um, the more people I talk to and just the feeling I have is that all this stuff is, is, uh, it's falling short. Um, people are uh, the, the the horizons are expanded, and uh, there's a lot more communication going on. Um, you know, at the uh, among uh, among us in the communities at the grassroots level. I think it's a it's a grassroots um, uh, you know effort to to you know we're all in the same boat, and I think a lot of people realize more and more realize that now that. Uh, um, this idea of uh, going out and competing against everybody so that you win at the you know uh, and damn everybody else just just isn't going to work anymore and that uh, I think there's more acceptance and uh, a lot more um, projects working on the you know from the charity from the nonprofit from the dominion uh, aspect that I see and I see it even creeping into the more of the mainstream financial media and press. So I think it's um, <clears throat> outreach, you know, talking to neighbors, talking to, to people that we uh, that we interact with every day, and you know, sp- spreading the idea that uh, that there's you know there's lots more important things than money, profit, power, and all these other things that are going on. Well, if we took the, the 
the corporate competition out of the picture, or at least reduced it, to where there wasn't 14 of the same products fighting for shelf space out there all the time, but maybe just a couple to give people alternatives and and constantly work to upgrade the quality of those products uh, in, in order to benefit and better the, the community. And uh, it would give a lot of a lot more opportunity to to keep more manufacturing here at home and in our local communities, rather than buying so many foreign products. Do you have any idea of what percentage of foreign products there are on the grocery shelves and hardware stores any any more? Probably. Six- well, I, I think it depends. I mean, the auto, the 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 cars. A lot of the cars are foreign cars. Um. Mm-hmm. You know, the U.S. still does reasonably well in tech products, but, you know, the U.S. multinationals, as you point out, are going overseas, you know, and, uh, to reduce costs. I, you know, I think it, you know, I mean, all of this comes back at the, at root to this brainwashed idea that everybody has, uh, um, or there's a number of ideas, but the core idea that, you know, that money has value, quote, money, and that this stuff we're chasing, uh, has value and that, that, uh, you know that that everybody has to go, you know, chase that, and that, that there's nothing more important than chasing that at the expense of just about every other, you know, human and need and moral value that there is. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I'm not saying I got an answer as to how to make that happen quickly, but uh, the 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 idea that uh, you know that that's a, that's corporate behavior is that way. You know that they they do things on a on a very short term. Basis, penny wise, pound foolish. That you know, there's nothing more important than the next quarter of the earnings report. And uh, you know, these guys are all just out there, you know, making decisions to basically line their own pockets um, at the expense of everything else. And they have the management of the government, because, yeah, because they have the money to buy the politicians, yeah, and the. The people who who advise the politicians. The, uh, well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the politicians are they're not rocket scientists; they're just talking heads. Yeah, how do you how do you break the uh, how do you, how do you um, how do you get politicians to make right choice? There's a question. Put a ter- term limit on their time in office. Mm-hmm. Shine yeah, the light uh, on them. That would be, that's right. Yeah, right. Well, it ultimately, it takes, it takes the, uh, it takes, uh, all of us, people to make, to make right choice on our, you know, us first from the grassroots up that we are going to, uh, we're not going to sit here and be complacent anymore, that we're going to go and, uh, you know, come in numbers and demand that they, that they, uh, perform the duties that they signed up for, which is to be public servants. Mm-hmm. That's but there again, the people have questions. How do you do that specifically? You know, what what would be the first step, and then the second step, and the third step? Yeah, uh, I don't necessarily have all those answers. Well, I would hope we have thinkers out there who figured that out. And uh, if you look at many of the world uh, governments and systems that have arisen in the past, communism certainly had that idea. Of making everything available for the people and, and, but the problem was that communism itself is a power structure. And so, uh, how, the way they competed was to eliminate their competition and, and to constantly, constantly abuse the people literally by mandating everything downward. And I think the answer is that this, the, the questions have to come from the people. And the answers have to come from the people in, in a common denominator of, of uh, perhaps the social media where th- questions could be developed and answers worked out through all the sources out there. And then, and then uh, organizations who might be geared up to produce a product or, you know, that's kind of like the, the, Big manufacturing cities that grew around one man- manufacturing plant. Well, that plant could still be manufacturing that, that or, or products that could be needed. But the communal consciousness is what we have to develop. 
Uh-huh. And, yeah, that's 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 there's a yeah there's there's a story in San Francisco here where the you know the the the, uh, the Blue Cross the one of the local Blue Cross organizations which are supposed to be not for profits right mm-hmm. um, these people paid some exorbitant amount of money uh, to purchase a luxury box and tickets at the new San Francisco San Francisco 49ers Stadium. So they're taking healthcare premiums in a not-for-profit and supporting the, you know, they, they are, all these corporations are supporting each other. Okay. Um, and now there's a, there's a local group that, of activists who's demanding that they, uh, give that money back, uh, either the money or the, whatever they bought goes back to the policyholders. Uh, but, you know, those, those little things, yeah, there's such a tight, um, yeah, uh, in, interlocking, you know, I'll scratch your back and you scratch mine mentality among these corporations that needs to be broken. Well, you see, you know, what's happening listening to you talk is I'm seeing nowadays people are going, um, believing that people are, corporations are cheating them. Whereas, say, as me as a child, that was such a foreign concept that, you know, your government, um, the pharmacy, you know, you, nobody would lie to you. You know, that's just against human consciousness. Yeah. You just lie them all. Uh-huh. Well, uh, same, like- same thing with, uh, same thing with, uh, that, that, that you, um, everybody always thought the politicians might be a little, uh, a little bumbling, you know, and they had to get their little pork and this and that, whereas, the, you know, now the concept, I think, that the reality sits in that they're just completely abject criminals. But you, nobody, nobody would have thought cops were bad either, you know, 20, yeah. 30 years ago. Well, this is, goes back to what we were talking about before we started the program is Catherine and I were starting to talk about truth and how you have to be true to yourself. You have to be true to the person that you are, whoever that person is, and be true to that, and then you can manifest whatever. And you look around in the world, I mean, how much truth is out there? You have to discern. You look at so many things are, they are the distractions, all this other stuff. How much of it is based on falsehoods, on miscommunications, on look over here, not over there? And all of it. each, all of it. every person has got to look inside themselves and be true to themselves and speak the truth. You're and real faint, how- Gary. We can't hear you. You know, we all have to, go ahead, Barry. I just said all of it, what you're uh, agreeing with what you're saying, that everything is a bunch of lies, and the whole thing is all lies that we've been pumped into. It's not just for the last 20 years or 30 years, for thousands of years. We're slaves, and we've, we're being controlled by these guys. There's, a, there's only a handful of them, maybe 10,000, and uh, those are the guys that are in control. And as long as they're in control, we're, we can't do, we're just going to make the best of whatever the best of evil, two evils, say. We'll be judging between, is this politician more evil than that one? And then we'll settle for the one we think is not quite as evil. That's not going to cut it in Dominion. The truth is the only thing that's going to cut it. And, uh... And it's people like you know, us... Until, are, until that time comes, we just got to, like, get, brush up and, and get our shit together and, and start uh, paying attention to what's going on and help the uh, overthrow of this the, these 10,000 uh, aristocrats or elitists or whatever you want to call them, Rothschilds type people that are in control. They control all the banks. They control all the corporations. You think there's a bunch of different products on the shelves. All those products for corporations all Oh, we lost you there, Gary. They didn't like what he was saying. Oh. oh. Okay, you're back now. Yep. Oh, that's weird. Okay. <clears throat> well, if you think of... Go ahead. Uh, well, I don't know how much got lost. You guys can hear me now? Yeah. Well, yes, we can. Oh, well, I forget what I was talking about. Just take carry it away. Yeah. Well, you know that um, they count on people's um, oh 
their the goodness and being true to say a product. What is that word called when you know your right. faith? Loyalty. Loyalty. Yes, you're loyal to this brand, or you're loyal to America, or you're loyal to the the president. You know, and they abuse that loyalty. And the minute you make a question about it, they call you that you're wrong. Why are you questioning? You know, where's your loyalty? To right. and as you they say, so people for everything. Yeah, they're taking it away from them, the light away from them, and sh- shining it back on you. Exactly, you're the fall guy. Oh, there we are. Or you just turn around and say, and speak the truth, and let it go over you, and get enough people speaking the truth. Some, you know, people start listening and going, "Oh yeah, I didn't think about that." Exactly. Well, yeah. Now that yeah. now that you show that to me, and then they start. They start opening their eyes and looking and, and hearing and seeing what's going on and going, I don't like this. I am not going to play that anymore and see what they can do not to play the game anymore. Yeah. Well, we're being forced to play the game. By the, the, the mainstream media, is everything that comes from the mainstream media is a lie. They're, they're constantly lying to us. They're constantly throwing us off the truth. They do nothing to do with the truth at all, except now and again they might report some little story about a dog that somebody helped or something like that. You know, that'll be a true story. Everybody can get a little buzz off that. But the rest of the time, everybody's listening to the bullshit beheadings and and uh, fear porn that they're pumping. It's constant Ebola scares, all this crap that they're doing over and over to keep us distracted and full of fear. Uh, while they fuck us in the in the uh, in the in the backside, that's basically what they're doing, and they're getting ready to execute and murder all of us if we don't stop them. Well, that's their agenda. That's their plan, and so we got to wake up and stop uh, uh, supporting their their crap. It's like what, and people are waking up. I think Israel made a big mistake when they attacked the Palestinians this last time because the people are no longer. Fall for this bullshit about about the Jews being uh, persecuted and all that crap. It's all a bunch of uh, smoke and mirrors, and now they're boycotting the Israeli products. That's what's in Ireland and many places around the world. They they found out through the internet what like Coca Cola is an Israeli product. You know who knew that? Well, people are saying, Jesus, I'm I'm not going to support them, and they and they're really boycotting them all over the place now. They're screwed. I think this is the end, the beginning of the end for, for, uh, for all that bullshit that the Israelis been doing through the last 50, 60 years here to keep everybody focusing on the little red well, temple. Well, what is the substance there? behind the, what's the substance behind the, the Israeli? It's money. Big, big money has been for hundreds and hundreds of years. And that's why the, the, the major leaders of major countries take them down is because they, they have too much power with the money and, their ability to accumulate and manifest money. But they really don't have any money. That's the weird thing about it. it all the money is in Asia. The gold is in Asia. The people in, uh, it's all like debt now. They've created all this debt out of this for, fiat money, and they've actually created a vast bottomless pit that they're all going to fall into. That they, it's the trick that they didn't, that they thought they could beat the beat the game, win the game. The Luciferian, they create Lucifer is the light bearer. That's what they call him. He's Satanist, and he brings the light. What does that mean? That means he creates the light that that we see. He creates all the light that's in the that's create, made up of the TV, newspapers. That's all made out of light, and they manipulate that light to keep seven billion people in the dark. That's what's going on. And uh, we got to stop that. We, we can't, we're not going to be in demand, be able to live in. <coughs> excuse me. The l- nature. I see videos all the time of, of geese, a bunch of sitting at the edge of the pond, and and there's a trough with food in it, and the, and these ducks or geese or whatever, they were geese, swans or something. They're they're scooping up the the food in the trough. Uh, and giving it to the fish that were all around there, big fat goldfish. These were these guys were feeding the fish. That's dominion. They, nature knows how to do it already. 
We just got to get those guys out of our way. We know what to do. The best thing, it feels that the best thing in life is how you feel is when you're helping something. You're making something better for your somebody, not just for yourself. Uh, you you better know, there, do we, something we, for somebody else. We can never win or do something about them by direct confrontation. No. We can only do no. it by shifting the consciousness that supports yeah. them, that exactly. allows them to support us. David, what do you think of that? I do absolutely. And I was about to say that I would interject and I'll, I'll be the peace bringer in this conversation. Is It really is about uh, coming to a consciousness level at the individual level so that that, like Green says, can expand out uh, across the globe, in fact. And I know right. that seemed, it seems like it's ineffectual, but that is essentially the only path that there is. That's and, right. It's our only choice. And, and there really is no central confrontational process that you can muster because you cannot come out and, and expect to win a, a direct confrontation. So given that, it really is about us moving into a state of consciousness where we are so much in non-judgment that we are so much in, a, in raising our consciousness and coming to a point. It really is very much like uh, Gandhi or, or Christ or, or uh, MLK and, and much of his words. Uh, so there really is a point where it, it's, a, it's a non-confrontational, non-violent, non-judgment ascension of human consciousness at the individual level, which in fact would bring us to a point where we would actually be able to get help, as uh, George Green indicates, by essentially becoming the new galactic citizen. Uh, and over time, there will be much chaos and there will be you know, a lot of gnashing of teeth. Uh, and there will be a lot of people who die. But, you know, from that uh, chaos, uh, we'll be born a new consciousness and a new process. But save that, there really isn't much of a path outside of that. And I believe that full power of my heart and soul. Well, the next question, and I think you're exactly right on, is how do we generate it? Where does it begin? Yeah. It begins within each of us. And I will tell you a story that happened to me today. I live 20 miles away from um, a large city to where I can do shopping. And I got into the car and started to drive into town. And before I, I left, I really concentrated on love, on being love, on happiness and joy, and just spreading it out all around me, just all around me. And as I started driving into town... Um, I go from two lanes into four lanes and there was a truck that was just like really riding my tail and I thought, well, you know, we're now into where he can pass me. But then I noticed right away he slowed down, uh, calling him a he, I don't know if it was a he or she. They slowed down and kept, a, you know, the two to three car lengths between us, but he followed me for a good ten miles. And I'm going, isn't this peculiar? You know, I wonder why he... Then I realized, oh, that's because I've got love spreading out all around me. And he, they're picking it up, and they like it, and they're calm. So they want it to be there. And so I opened up my consciousness because I had to turn off the road. And as I did, I could feel a disappointment of like, oh, something's leaving. And that's, we start within ourselves, and we spread it all around. We actually are in communication with everyone around us, even driving down the freeway. If you'll step back and notice into your psychic center as you're driving along and and have your focus on the car ahead of you, you can feel what that person is is feeling. And you know when he's going to slow down and make a turn. Uh, I've practiced this. This is one way of developing your psychic ability is to feel and just project yourself into the future and, and see, is he going to turn right? Is he going to turn left? Is he going to continue on? Uh, and it, it's a great way of getting your immediate feedback into your system and, and it trains your inner consciousness that when you ask that question, 
and, and reach out <coughs> through the the psychic field to another person, you can receive answers in, in anticipation of his future events. I think that the, the energy definitely projects out. I mean, if this was even a few years ago, um, when I was, you know, I was still had a, was pretty, I would get angry about things, but I'm, I'm leaving, uh, uh, in the morning, getting ready to go, and I, uh, well, I, I come up to a, you know, I'm I'm in a hurry kind of, and I come up to a to an in, to the intersection of the stop sign and a crosswalk, and here's these two kind of old guys, and they're you know they're going real slow, and I I was about to get angry, and I caught myself, and I thought, you know what the heck, what's so important? I turn the music up, and I'm just kind of grooving along there, and and these are two old black guys. I'm up in Oakland, you know, and I'm the white guy on the, in the car here, and. Uh, they get about halfway across and they look over at me and smile and wave their, wave their hand, thanks for letting us go. You know, they absolutely, I mean, you know, it was, uh, yeah, I've had several incidents that happen like that. Doesn't that make you proud of yourself when you're able to catch yourself? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I love that feeling. We have to get there as, as individuals so that it can expand out into groups of people and, uh, in fact, I've been actually working personally on that in the last five, six, seven days, truly starting trying to stay in that space of non-judgment and, and letting most things go. And when you start it, you begin to see how much of it you do, and then you begin to see how much other people do and how powerful it actually is to just not engage. Well, the third law of the universe is allowance. Yes. Allowing others to be and do what they want to do. And, and, it, and in that, that's what allows us when we're in that state of allowing is we can project our needs into the group mind conscious and it'll respond by allowing whatever is required for our, our immediate need. I notice when I'm driving across town here, there's probably 30 stoplights from one side of Boise to the other and set speed limits and all of that. And if I will project ahead and see nothing but green lights, ahead of me and hold that and with the, the shirt and perfect knowing it's going to be there the traffic just as, as flows around and with me and carries me right through there at the speed limit there's nobody going too slow or nobody jamming in it just all harmonizes and and works together and that's the fourth law of the universe is is harmony yeah harmony and balance and so as we learn to fit into these things and and project these stability programs. The, the, the George Green said, "If actually he was given this by the Galactics, um, the first law of the universe was the law of attraction. Right. That what you create, what you feel, and what you manifest is what you attract. I know if, if I'm upset or or in a hurry or something, or, or aggravated about something, and I start to go down through town, I'll stop at every freaking stoplight. You know, it, yeah, it, it's yeah. just, just the way it works. And we're also uh, so attuned. I know myself and, and many others have have indicated this is true for them. Is is we have this constant self talk. And we have the illusion that because we're not verbalizing or we're not communicating it to someone that somehow or other it's it's not valuable and has no power. But that self-talk is as powerful as any word. Very true. Very, very true. So we, we self-talk a lot, and we don't even project it. And you can call it self-talk, and sometimes it's just self-think. And just like Frank's talking about driving down the road, you can you can actually find yourself... Because of that red light, doing that self-think, self-talk process, and just attracting more of that stuff to you. Well, the second law of, of the universe is the, the, the law of manifestation. What you create, you bring into form. Yeah. And, and every thought it, we have is a physical form out there in the standing waves of consciousness. And every thought, every every idea, every every choice, every action or reaction is patterned right into earth mind. And it becomes a, a standing uh, pattern of whatever occurs on that site. And that becomes the instinctive consciousness of everybody who passes through it. Yeah. I, I've talked to you before about how I noticed I discovered that, that, that we could put a thought form in a highway as we're traveling along 
uh, do it somewhere. And then, uh, if you'll notice, every time you come uh, um, past that area, next time you'll think of the, identically the, the same thing because the thought form is still there, mm-hmm. and it patterns into time and space. And not only that, but we're picking up on the thought from everybody else out there. <laughs> yes. And uh, so it becomes a, a fascinating balance of understanding those four laws that, that home, hold everything in form. It works right directly in with the, the, the clearing away um, the higher consciousness procedures and to write out into dominion. It's It's just perfect. It all works. And so it doesn't require that we get on the soapbox and preach it out over the radio or anything. It's simply that we do it for ourselves, and anyone who's interested pass the information, and it doesn't have to be complicated information along to people to help them begin doing their clearing work and, and uh, to help thinking inward with realization that, that their thoughts are creating their outer manifestation. And this get, get, takes you out of being subjective to your reality. You hear we preach that at practically every show. Create your reality instead of being subjective to it. Yeah, it's, I, it's I, your choice on how you're going to react to it. Hmm. And that's the only thing that you have true control over is your reactions and acts. Well, those four laws... I, I see them like like a, a cycle. If they were put in a circular form, so they constantly cycled. One uh, given the next an opportunity to manifest or be, it becomes a, a perfect cycle of life. So anywhere in there where you see the cycle being inter- interfered with or interrupted by the opposition force on the dark side, you simply put the energy on it to, to make it cor- correct and, and to bring it back into balance and harmony so the cycle, the cycles of life continually work. Hmm. So how do we do that? Well, years ago when I was doing trans-channeling in California and trying to find a solution to the world's problems, I asked Spirit one time, how can I make an impression on the world? How can I change the world? And the, the voice came back to me and quietly said, one person at a time. Today, when I was at the market, and I was punching in my access code, you know, sliding the car because I wasn't using money. And um, I realized as I was punching in the, the money that at the end of my transaction, I was going to lay my hand on the whole keyboard and infuse it with love. So everybody who came through after me as they touched the keypad would pick up love to activate their own love within them. Very good. You could apply that to every time you go to a public toilet, couldn't you? In a roundabout fashion. Ha ha, <laughs> yes. You can bless, no, that's, bless that's, the sewers and everybody who uses them. Well, it's the same thing whenever you grab a hand, a door handle or, um, you know, push open a door and so forth, infuse it with love so that the people behind you using it um, are graced with that also. Give us a definition of love. Love is um, not having judgment. Um, just being, um, not, there's no comparison. There's no, it's like there's no nothing. No vested interests. No, yeah. e- no ego. No you agenda. Speak a lot of, exactly. Just a lot of space. That's the law of allowance. Manifested with the intent to, to resonate this open consciousness, a state of perfection to everyone, and have them respond and passing along to others that they meet and work with. I think love is a 
light and vibration. What you feel doesn't end there. It's uh, it's the beginning of uh, energy. It's moving. So wherever you go, I love how Catherine infuses everything she touches with love. That's beautiful because that reminds us and I bet it makes it quite more powerful. But I think if we ourselves carry that love, that everywhere we go also um, is enhanced by that light and love. And I am lucky enough to see that in action because in my work, I come in direct contact with about 300 people a month, direct, one-on-one. And I'm happy to find that that that's the right thing to do because that's what I do do. I, I bring out something that they need to hear. So, somehow, magically, it's created. Whatever the conversation is, I'm open to it, and I can because it's 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 really overwhelming how many people are drinking that Kool Aid, that TV and the news thing, that have no idea what's really going on, no idea. They can still believe that nine eleven thing. They can still they still think vaccines are good for you. They have twenty thousand twenty five thousand times more mercury in it. That's that's safe. There's something wrong with that. Anyways, our food, all of that. So I go on a one-to-one basis, and we bring out something that's really important, and then they go, wow, I really needed to hear that today. And you can see how people are touched, and their eyes open up bigger, and you can see light starting to come from them. And so who you touch, they touch others. And so that's how it gets big. And I love it. It's beautiful. This yes. is this is changing consciousness. Changing, telling them how to make their food safer. Wash those vegetables. Pay attention. Your water's poisoned. Do something about it because our health is the most important thing. It's very weak out there. You can't go in that grocery store without fi- picking up a product that has poison in it. How they demonize sugar. Sugar's good for you. It's the substitute sugars that are full of poison. So. Those kind of truths is what people need to hear, and they see that, and they feel that vibe from you, and they just, it hits home with them, and they know it, so then they carry it forth. And they keep coming back around, they, they, they really like that. That's what, that's what we are here for. That's what Dominion is, to me. And that's exactly what we're doing with this radio program. Everyone who listens to us now is feeling the expression of love that we're resonating through these airways and that's what we do with our healing work healing is the most wonderful one to one expression of love imaginable and and love holds all the frequencies of of potential in it of manifestation and that's what the galactic flow is it flows through us and gives us such an abundance of love and all I have to do is mention it my hands start to tingle and heat up and that's just that's just because it's it's all around us, this potential, the potentiality of love and of abundance and dominion. It is, it is here. It's not coming in another age, a, a hundred or a thousand years from now. This is the age of love. And this was prophesied by, by many of those who, who had foresight that could see this age coming. Um, particularly the, the Mayans and the, the when we reached 2012, it wasn't the end of the world, it was just the end of the old age of domination. And now as we move into dominion, each one of us can become a walking resonance of communicating love and the frequencies which raise the vibration of everything. And ultimately, we will be able to lift the general consciousness vibration out of the domination range up into the dominion range above the heart. Everything below the heart center is 
domination frequency range, and that's what we primarily interact in out here in the physical world through our, through the solar plexus. That's the highest level of the of the low self animal consciousness. But it's this, it's the the, the uh, solar plexus consciousness that, that when it's in direct, directly in command of our choices through the brain, it's reading everything that goes on around us, and it's it's dealing with everything around us on an ongoing basis, either in in fear and protectionism and domination and control and attract its needs, or it can be a radiating energy that's going out to the high cell that that we're sending back down to the solar plexus to radiate out and and shift the lower cell that's what the task of each one of us has is to shift the consciousness where our own personal low selves first and that's what we're talking about doing as you're doing focusing your energy and consciousness on love and raising your frequency levels that radiant that resonance goes directly into the low self and changes how it thinks and feels. It gets it responding to the world out here and using love as an attractor rather than something to be feared because you might lose personal power or domination if you love someone or something or a group. And in the second level, <coughs> the law of manifestation it is a direct, a direct resource of, of love, of the frequencies of desire and will acting with intent in the zero point. So that's directly what, what, uh, our low cells do. Our high cells primarily are the, the, the consciousness of being human. And we make the choices with our high self. But it's the low cell responsibility working out in the physical world and holding the physical world in form and survival as it has for thousands of years. And so the high self's job is to come in and domesticate the low self animal and bring it, raise its consciousness up to an ongoing radiance and resonance where your whole system is radiating and broadcasting the the conditions of love, manifestation, uh, harmony, balance, peace and joy, and doing it in a way that that is allowing everyone else to experience their own reality as they go through life and and learn their lessons and and experientiality. So that is basically our school, our our. Uh, the communal consciousness that we are sharing here in this broadcast is we're sharing, learning how things work so we can share how things work with others. And when I, I firmly believe that anyone in the right mind in any situation, if given a choice between the right choice that will benefit them, make their lives better, more bountiful, more abundant, more loving, experiential, more healthy, more vibrant, as opposed to one that puts them into domination, sub- subjugation, um, low quality food, uh, all the things of negativity. If anyone if in their right mind would make the right choice, if they understood what those choices were and what to do with them, and I see that as is our job and our responsibilities as, as evolving humans and enlightened humans to deliver that information every chance we get. And the primary way we do it is simply the way Catherine does. Just live it, be it, express it, resonate it, raise people's frequency without the, without having to convince them uh, or, or to do a lot of clearing work with them to get them to believe in your thoughts and ideas and perceptions. Does that make sense? Yeah, everybody within themselves have, um, I'll call it like a button or an on switch. And it is turned on when you're born and you, you know, you're held in somebody's arms and you are loved. And it's on. That's why people like babies so much. And somewhere along the line, it starts dimming or getting turned off. Um, and so 
to me, that's what my responsibility is, is to help, help everybody discover their on switch, how to turn their light on, how they can find it within themselves. I can't do it for them. They need to do it and just allow it to be without any judgment or uh, whatever other words you were saying before, Frank, about that. Every single one of us has this ability because that's what we are. We all are love, period. Well, I would invite the listening audience now who are listening and being drawn into what we're saying to feel what is resonating from us and our group mind consciousness. My hands are red hot because they're resonating this energy of of unconditional love that comes from the galactic center out into my computer, right out through the airways. And you can, you'll feel that resonance and pick it up yourself. And when you feel your hands getting hot, this means that you're in the state of consciousness to be a manifester, a healer, to understand what harmony and, and uh, balance is, to be in a state of consciousness where you allow and observe everyone else and, and, and empower everyone to do their thing. And if you, you see them making wrong choices, then you can assist with suggestions or dem- demonstration or uh, expression. But in no way do we control anything or dominate anything. We just let it be. And then over time, it creates its own momentum. Uh, and as uh, Green talks about, uh, thought thinking starts to develop its own momentum, its own strength, starts filling in the, the holes and the gaps, and uh, we may see it, we may not, but over time it is assured to fall into place if enough momentum is created by each of us individually, folding into the aggregate. Can we lose it? So what's the first step in that is self-realization, learning how to go within and deprogram the, the, the habits, the ideas, the basic personality and character traits that are not beneficial to you making right choices. And with that goes poverty, jealousy, greed, avarice, domination in any form, Judgment. Judgment. Ego. Uh, anything that makes you feel bad about yourself or makes you compare yourself to others in a lesser way. Fear. What's some more of the stuff that we need to deprogram? Walt Disney. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not kidding, you know, really. Exactly. Yeah. Walt Disney, you got to get that out of there. Walt Disney? Yep. Mind control programming creates yeah. disappointment. Interesting. Really evil subliminal messages and right into the kids. It's unbelievable. Got to stop. Thank you, Marilyn. Yeah, you know, I was experiencing something this morning that kind of caught me. I, uh, as I was coming on my computer, I mistakenly went to the site... <clears throat> and I'll, I'll name it because it was MSN, and I usually don't do that because I know that's one of those popular sites where it has flash and bang and, you know, date this and, you know, find this woman and it's got music. And, I mean, it's just it's just a, a cornucopia of everything that's essentially wrong. And I remember looking at it this morning and went, oh, my God, look at this stuff just blowing into my face right here on one screen. And I thought it was quite apropos to what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We're getting hammered by that stuff. Just hammered. It was, you know, get a date here, punch this button, and it was talking about all the, the, the rice event where, you know, he slapped his wife and knocked her out. And, you know, just on and on and on, all on one screen. It was just so much overload. It was just amazing. And people are, you know, sucking that up all day long. Yeah, and temptation is hard to resist. They're yeah. feeling that it's okay to do. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it also doesn't require that you have any true engagement because you just go from one stimuli to another, and you don't have to think about it. You're just like and a, you're just a spectator, like going to the sports yeah, you're, game, you're, watch them play football. You're you're on t on the internet watching some guy beat up his wife, yeah. you know, while you're sitting in the old easy chair or on the office chair. Yeah, uh, so, you know, and you call that living. Yeah, so I went to Starbucks after that to just kind of take uh, one of Green's books and sit and relax for a little bit and do a little reading in a book. And uh, I was just kind of looking around the Starbucks, and literally, you know, every chair in the place is filled, and every hand had a, you know, an iPhone. I mean, they had headsets on. Starbucks, another Israeli company. Yeah. McDonald's, another Israeli company. But it was all just uh, nothing but stimuli the whole time. Everyone is completely just in overload, and they don't even know they're overloaded. Well, actually, they're in they're in cyberspace, which is actually no space at all. They're not low overloaded. They're empty. They're just like zombies. Well, everything that they got going on in their head doesn't really exist in the real world. Yeah. It's all just cyberspace crap. We're in cyberspace now, but we're actually trying to get back out and connected with the, uh, the people that aren't aren't you sure. know on the that are actually walk around and move in the physical world. Yeah. Yeah, so I came home and cut my computer off, all the lights, and I just sat quietly for a while. I was thinking of how children play in a playground, that they don't cast judgment or fear or anything. They just go running to go play with whoever they're playing. They don't look at who's wearing what. What color people's skins are or anything like that. They're just there to play and have a good time until somebody makes a comment or takes something away and then they will look at whoever their caregiver is to look for the response on how they're supposed to act or react to that. And I hate the idea of blaming everything on the mothers, but in a roundabout way, it's whoever the caregiver is and how they react that the child will remember to react in the future. Sure. That's right. That's edu- with the real education right there. How many homes do you go into to visit where their little three or four or five year old kids are sitting in front of a TV set watching cartoons? Because that keeps them out of the hair of the mom and dad. All of them. It's a rare thing to be the other kind. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the kind of place we need to go back to. That's part of that whole consciousness um, reestablishment. And really, I've given a lot of consideration in the last few days on, on what that looks like in terms of uh, creating that as a manifested uh, reality. And, um, you know, it, it looks pretty pleasurable to actually back away from much of that. Uh, and, and move into a simplistic process of, of management of your own mind and being in quiet and peace. And, uh, you know, there are ways to find uh, trans- transactions without money. Um, it, it's all doable, but not in the current consciousness. Right. It'll be easy to change things, you know, uh, as much as these movies and cartoons are are feeding disinfo, imagine what they can do if they're bringing truth. So yeah. it's a great educational tool, and I, I can't hardly wait for it to break through. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of breakthroughs, I am literally a spiritual scientist or a psychic scientist. Call it what you will, because I study humans, study humankind, and we are the most amazing lab rats in the world, in <laughs> maybe the universe, in what we can create and bring into manifest form as, as thoughts and ideals and, and uh, civilization and commerce and everything else. So studying and said, uh, uh, and 
coming up with ways to clear, do the clearing work and, and find growth of consciousness who are moving up out of, out of the world of domination into dominion. And I've done this for like something like 35 years now without really, really understanding where I was going with it. But I finally come to a gigantic breakthrough this morning in meditating with Joan and a realization that is literally going to cut right across all this bullshit yeah. and take us right to the core reality, uh, the core reality in each one of us in our zero points and how it functions and what operates that thing. And I'll share that with you at a future date when I've refined it more and can and understand it better myself. But it it is simply incredible, and uh, it works. Awesome, awesome. Frank, I actually have been doing, uh, you know, since you and I last spoke maybe, what, four or five days ago, uh, actually been working with that, moving from the third dimension and just moving to the right, to the right, to the right, and moving on into the fourth dimension daily. Mm-hmm. Uh, and working with that, and uh, I think I'm I'm witnessing uh, you know mild transformations uh, from just that process. That's parallel reality shift. Yes, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, I can teach you now, and I'd like to have a session with you when you're ready for it. Okay. To uh, how to access the source yeah. of those realities and what holds them in form, and and. And, and change it right at the forest, source. And it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I've actually been playing with different ways to get into it, how to, how to actually be in it and, and make it more viable and more powerful. So that would be awesome. Love to do it. So. Have you had any more implants or anything? Uh, just one, uh, in the last week. And, and I've really kind of taken a different tack now from, a, from, from the perspective of, uh, uh, I'm not going to be looking at it from a, a resistance standpoint as much as, okay, there, there will be a time when this has no viability, it, it doesn't happen, and I'm not going to give it any more of my power and energy, and I'm moving on. I'm ready to give you that time, that power. Yeah, so. That's- All right. We can look forward to that, and when the rest of you are ready, it can be delivered to you also. All right, we uh, are here at our break time, so let's take advantage of that. Go ahead. Well, I'm back, and so are we. Um, do we have any healing requests this week? Yes, well, let's stop now. Um Several, actually. The, the, I mean, one of the the, the first one uh, is um, ever since Dave passed away, and I've taken on this uh, this station. There's been a lot of stuff that's really been getting in my way, and it feels like an uphill struggle. I'm wondering, is this opposition force, and if so, how can I? Or can it be bolstered? Can I ask for help? Or is this because it's against my natural flow? Because both can have the same effect, can't they? I would like to be able to read that if you can post it for me here. Um, well, I, I just kind of it, it just kind of came out of my head. Um, oh, <laughs> all right. So okay. th- this is this is basically, you know, um, for instance, here's a for instance. Uh, ever since um, ever since Dave passed away, uh, uh, the the website has been almost impossible to maintain. Um, it's crashed a couple of times. People can't get in. Um, there's all sorts of issues with it. It's like a behemoth. It's huge. It's like a huge old. Thing and I have no idea how it works. Nobody, nobody on the team knows how it works. So there's all these there's all these things like that 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 kind of don't work anymore. Um, mm-hmm. And and so you know, I'm I'm really in in a way I'm asking uh, for for guidance from spirit to say, you know, what's the what's the way forward out of this? Do I need do I need to just kind of 
<laughs> do Mr. Pluto and, and cleanse the whole thing, start from scratch, or am I simply um, being coming up against opposition forces and I need to bring in help along the way somehow? And what would be the nature of that help? Does this make sense? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> In fact, while you're repeating the question the second time, I, I opened up to Stephen to see what uh, um, input would come from from a higher order of consciousness. And so I'm still assimilating it as I'm listening. So um, just bear with me for a moment here. All right. All right. JP, you've been given a, a, a unique opportunity to be highly effective in the world. And you're fortunate enough to have the capabilities of, of understanding electronics and, and how to use electronics for, in communication to have a, a profound shift in the world consciousness and to do exactly what we were talking about in the previous show. The fact that you inherited Dave's system also means that there should be a a fusion and simplification to where you not only understand but have the vested interest in the entire management of it if that is what you choose to do and how you choose to express and so I would advise that in the near future, you're going to be given adequate funds to do that because uh, we're, we're looking into the, into future opportunities that can come your way and we see this developing. I think the thing for you to do uh, in the interim is to decide what you want how it should be structured, not only so that you have a, an, a the adequate basic equipment uh, in in the radio work and whatnot, what you're doing, but you can also attract and afford people who can take some of the mundane problems off of your out of your hands, the maintenance and things of that nature, uh, the archiving and all the other associated duties. And so we're sending out an attraction right now. And uh, as uh, we speak, Frank feels uh, this warmth coming through his hands and it's his body signal that indicates that manifestation is possible. And so we're going to do a, a, a manifestive creative function here at this moment. Put your hands about six to eight inches apart and let this flow of energy come through everyone out there because we'll be co-creating this. And feel the resonance between the negative left hand and the positive right hand of this flow of manifestive energy that's coming through. Now this is energy, this is manifestation potential. And we direct with our heart how and what we want to bring into form. And our soul is what sends the message to the heart to the zero point of what it is we want to bring into manifestation. And so, JP, I want you to visualize now very strongly and completely how you'd like to have the new system set up and all the methodology and tools and equipment you can possibly need and how a method of structuring the system so you can control it and continue to deliver the information you need because what's happening right now is it's, it is becoming burdensome and it's, it's taking your heart out of it as far as what you want to manifest and do and the good you're doing and, and that's directly the problems you're having is a direct effect of the opposition force trying to break you down and take your intent out of the mixture. 
So this ball of energy that we're creating now, project from your heart center into that ball of energy all the thoughts and ideas, intentions of what you want to create. And everyone out there that's listening is doing the same thing. Only we're following your, psychically we're following your direction into what you need. We're manifesting the form of your future radio station. And it can come into, through the law of attraction, it's going to come into form very quickly. Because we're going to implant this law with, through the law of attraction, this orb we've created of imagination and creativity in the subtle energy field, which is the pre-manifesting field. We're going to take this as soon as you're complete in what you want, and we're going to put it in our hearts, directly into our hearts, to manifest your new radio station and to put you in a place and time that you want to be in to operate it. So let me know when you're ready. Okay. All right. Everyone out there, slowly bring our desire and well and intent, bring that globe of energy into your heart center, putting it in the zero point, creating a field of consciousness around the heart that will continue to bring into form and manifest through the law of attraction, the law of manifestation, the law of allowance and the law of harmony we can bring into into manifestation exactly what JP is creating with his mind now and broadcasting to us now you feel that glow in your heart center this is not only pulling together the, the needs of the moment it's reaching into the future to see what you have created there and bringing that back as the prototype to fit in with, with what you know to do now. So see the power of the Christ within our indwelling hearts. We manifest a new radio station for, for JP with an abundance of money and the abundance of money to through ongoing supporters to maintain it and we see this happening now and we reach back in time and incorporate everything that Dave created in your vision and we use Dave's desire and intent and his goodwill of helping the world we bring that in And we project this is a flow of consciousness into the future that will create your radio station. And so it is. Now, anytime you have problems, any stresses come up in operating your, your, your system the way you have it, Now, simply take your awareness back to this point in time and feel this energy in your heart, this globe of energy that is working directly through our heart systems, our zero points, with your zero point, and with everything that is necessary to bring into manifestation what you need. And we're also projecting into this a incredible flood of love, love which can be the manifester and hold the form of the reality you create. And this is also, we're projecting into this globe, a strong protective wheel, will to surround you with energy, a protective shield, and everything you do, so nothing anywhere that you reach out and touch can backflush and cause any disruption or any breakdown in, in you or your equipment. And so it is.
It's interesting you said the word wheel, um, because that's that's the way I see it. I see it as a, a kind of well, actually, it's like a globe. I saw um, many points, not that many, but a few points around the globe that are like transmitters um, that keep the station running. Yeah, and uh, that that's like an a geometric form within a sphere that has got the the earth on and that's almost like a wheel I saw that like a wheel rolling down a, a track rolling down a, a groove mm -hmm. oh, that's the, so thank you very much all right and then we'll we'll keep track of how how you proceed and keep reinforcing this for you and the funds will be yours very shortly Okay, that felt hey, good. Hey, uh, hey, was there any uh, Joomla help files on the internet that would? Are there no help to help you figure out the website? Really, it's it's a matter of you know. I'd rather have somebody who can look after it, um, yeah. rather than having to sit and battle with it because it's. I mean, it is a behemoth, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, there'll there'll be something happening, and um, we you know we might just change change things quite radically and and make it work so that it works for everybody uh, and opens it up. But uh, so you are saying that there there are uh, opposition forces at work, and we've kind of neutralised those in a way just now, Frank. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's the. Uh, Yes, and so um, thanks very much, uh, Free Sovereign, um, and uh, and from Bright Eyes, because uh, uh, you know one of the things is that you know, I've been trying to um, get Colleen online as a producer, and we did it for about a day, and then her system failed completely, um, and now she's um, having to reload systems, and it, it just seems like a real uphill struggle. And I'm thinking, hang on a second, you know. When things are this much of a struggle, there's something else going on, isn't there? Usually. So, I, uh, 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 you know, I thought, right, okay, let's see what Frank has to say about this, or, or if Stephen's got any uh, any input on this. So, thank you very much. All right, we'll keep up with you on that. Now, uh, your dad is healing last week. Uh, his feet are better. Do you want to do a repeat of that to keep him developing? That's yeah, I think I, you know, I say why, why not you know, give a a top up of energy. All right. You just focus your attention on him and on what his needs are, and we'll work through you now and direct the energy to him. All right, he's got some hardening of the arteries. Let's soften those arteries. So his circulation improves. <laughs> Let's stop his corns from developing in his feet interesting enough those are, are a, a little viral thing we can take the energy away from the life force away from those they'll simply disappear okay Let's take our attention to Clarentine, her father, Al Graham, in Austin, Texas, has heart damage and infection issue with his blood. Request healing energy. Okay, this is a, let me tune in to him. 
All right. This is one of those situations where infectious agents are actually the cause of causative factor of much of the heart problems because they break down the system and by impairing the natural function of the the valves and the, the heart muscles so we're we're using our hands again on each side of his heart internally See the power of the crisis in us. We see Al Graham stimulating his is a, a new system in him, a, a new anti agent to fight the viruses in his system. So he'll regain health naturally and he'll maintain this system. It's an, it's an energetic uh, stimulation of his natural immune system, but we're uh, shifting it to viral protection now. We see the infection receding away. We see the heart strengthening, blood vessels opening to nurture and feed the heart that had been blocked by the disease. We see him regaining his vitality. His desire to live. And we continue this as long as our hearts are radiating, our hands are radiating the specific frequencies to the galactic flow through our hands directly into his heart. And we want to extend out to the rest of the family who may be subjected to this type of infection. We'll send the healing energy to them also. So that'll be in in a way bringing natural antibiotics into the family to resist their susceptibility. Hmm, Interesting. Must be a big family. There's a lot of energy flowing. All right. So it is. Kimberly with her uncle, her failing uncle in California. She needs love and support to help with his process and also support the work she's done to shift the financial systems of the world. So we tune into Kimberly. Direct the flow of unconditional love through her, the galactic flow. So she is guided in right choice of action and working as the financial systems of the world. And she's led to people who can give her support and comfort and the guidance she needs. needs. And through her, we know she sends healing energy to her uncle. We amplify that energy through her knowledge of what is required and help him along in his process 
if he should be willing to release he can but that's his choice otherwise we give her the support and healing necessary to bring him back into health again All right, that felt good. Okay, do you have anything else in the chat room, JP? Yeah, let me see. There is something here. Yeah. Um, so we had, yeah, we had, oh no, we done that. Yeah, so we done that one, that one, and that one. Um, so yeah, we we're about halfway through. Um, somebody asked me if we could. Um, well, this week is the week of uh, the Scottish independence vote. Um, there's a referendum going in, in uh, Scotland, and uh, it's a very hot debate, actually. Um, and uh, I was wondering if it was possible that uh, we could send in an energy that would keep <laughs> everything in line spiritually. That it was a, 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 a that it was truly representative and non-influenced or corrupt. Yeah, basically. Great can idea. We, can we influence the uh, the purity and lack of corruption of the Scottish vote? It feels really like this could be something really big. All right. The way we'll do this is to go directly into the earth mind of Scotland. Because at one time they were free and independent, most some of the most free and independent tribal societies in the world, and they did live in dominion. So we drop into the earth mind beneath the Scottish islands, and we go back in time to the point where they were invaded and their national dominion societies interrupted and subjugated to forces of civilization, so to speak, which were primarily guided by the Catholic Church and by the English principalities that go all the way back to the Anunnaki. And so, uh, where they were free prior to that, they became slaves to the system. And so, we clear and release that now from the standing waves of the, our, the group mind consciousness of the earth mind of the Irish landscape clear the crystal send a resonance through the crystal of the desire and intent to clear the old patterns and forms of domination replace them with patterns of dominion and freedom honesty and integrity quality life and well-being universal support of of each other as they learn the principles of dominion and so uh, we f feel that resonance working right up directly now as the instinctive consciousness into the people that are conducting the elections and we give them clarity by extending clarity through them so they can make the right choice the right choice to be choose fairly to choose the system they want to express through and for the, those who are the leaders of that system to do so in dominion to throw off the yoke of domination of the aristocracy aristocracies coming back into balance and harmony doing it with a total flow of unconditional love 
that every person in Ireland will receive the rightful intent to make right choice and choice to be for the benefit of everyone equally clearing, releasing the domination forces now we have that desire firmly in mind so again create your globe of energy between your hands create the orb of energy and we put the the intent into the orb to hold the form we're working directly with the devic consciousness in doing this we're manifesting holding the form the JP requested where people be fair and honest and that they make right choice to support everyone in a lateral plane of consciousness not in the vertical plane of domination now we feel our, the energy field between our hands getting quite hot and we know that through resonance we can reach out and touch every person in Scotland by projecting just handing this orb of energy to each and every one of them to put in their hearts operating their zero point so they will be loving and empowering and can make right choice in their elections and in the government they create afterward and you feel the energy release your hands we're holding the group mind consciousness of everyone in, in Scotland in mind here and we feel our hearts open in love to the Scottish people and so it is Mm. that was interesting very very um, according to the law of manifestation I would I was uh, envisaging the joy of uh, everybody hugging each other in 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 uh, in uh, celebration perfect do you know this these tools we're, we've been given there's no limit to what we can do with them all the limits is, is our our own restrictive fears or lack of self-realization and energetically we can be co-creators and in a in a very dramatic way as we've seen in just in the healings we do we can also heal circumstances and conditions by working directly in earth mind with the Akashic records that's what earth mind is and deprogramming the old forms and reprogramming positive through positive manifestation and the law of attraction and the law of dominion Dominion is a law. It is a, a fundamental law of nature. This is what su- supports and gives the abundance of life to nature. Okay, does anyone have any comments about that? Since we, we don't have any requests beyond that, we can talk about it a little bit. What what would make Scotland a, a beautiful, wonderful place to live without the domination of the government controls? They would have more money to enjoy life. And people would not be trapped into constantly being occupied to survive with overpriced everything 
and uh, fees and ru- and rules and regulations that are not really laws, no, but that are going to feed someone we don't know exactly for what reason because they said to i'm not sure how that works well it's time to we the people yeah. we got to bring it back that's what dominion is right right spending and using their money for themselves not to send it somewhere else with the bureaucracy that does nothing except for create more bureaucracy and self-perpetuating not necessarily just money, but resources and resources, energy, everything. especially yes. our energy yes. and our health. My goodness, to have all of choice, to have choice, that is freedom. The group mind consciousness of the Scottish people are fascinating to me because generally they are a loving people. They, they're they very r- rural minded and literally the thought impulse the, the stabilization of dominion already exists there if we don't have to create it we simply have to remove or release the restrictive forms exactly. of domination so they can be who they already are Exactly. They lived for centuries in harmony with nature. Right. They took from the earth and gave back and, and just what they needed. They did not, they were not excessive. They were not greedy. They've been exploited, basically. A simple way to look at it is Scotch whiskey. So it's from Scotland. It's the Scotland products. The Reese. It's the the. And so then, what happens? So England takes over, and gets it, and charges big taxes, and raises the price. I mean, I don't see what what good there is in that. Is that their position just to collect money off of somebody else's hard earned, you know, time? Supposedly, they give them the funds to be the protectorate. <laughs> of the state, but rather than that, they are the invaders. Yeah, they lend them paper Generally money and are. charge them interest on it, uh, so that they're all into debt up to their eyeballs, just like we are over here. But it's a fraud. So by Eng- uh, Scotland going through this is 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 eliminating the fraud. And, and regaining dominion and sovereignty to conduct business in a proper way with transparency and accountability. With the circulation. With people who love each other and, and uh, want the community to grow. Where the, the, the money circulates through the community, supporting everyone, and isn't taken out. You hit the nail right on the head there. Because if it's laws that's taken out, they're held in in impoverishment. And that's what they do with it deliberately by creating these bubbles in the stock market. Because when the bubble bursts, that they deliberately create it to burst. Because when it bursts is when they when they uh, when they take the cream off the top, and everybody else goes down. They those guys know when to buy and sell, and they actually profit off the burst. So they take the profits and buy more stock and so only control the companies. Is that how it works, Mike? Just a second, Adam. Yes, what was the question? Um, the stock market bubbles are created. Yes, they, they pump they pump it up. They then will sell short. Or you know put on positions that make money. They, so they can make money. It doesn't. It's possible to make money, whether markets are going up or going down. You just have to position on the right side, the correct side of the market. So yeah, it's looking right now like we might have. Uh, we're getting ready for a little stock market turbulence into October here. Yeah. But the uh, the final stock market top might not be until next year. Isn't it like a big ring around the rosy game? I mean, they're well, controlling the whole thing, and, and everybody else is buying into it and, and losing their money, at where these guys are pulling the string to what goes up and what goes down. They're controlling it all. Yeah, it's a big fixed casino, plus also it's a uh, 
So it's we a, just it's need a giant to... money. La- it's a giant money laundering uh, exercise yeah. as well. Well, truths reveal. We need light. Come on, light. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people know that too. They're, you know, more and more of the average person on the street realizes that too. They're not going to be able to get uh, the same kind of enthusiasm back in this. I mean, even even professional money managers know that this is just completely unnatural. Yeah. Okay, are there any more requests for Haley on anything? <laughs> well, we fixed yeah. it all, didn't we? Well, hang on a second. Um, uh, Wolf Baby uh, is saying um, Atlantean rule, and Cindy is saying royals go to war for the 1% profit. Uh, that's the same thing. <laughs> the Atlanteans, as, as they call them, which you probably call the Anunnaki. What's, what's, what's your take? I just say the gig's up, the game's over, they're done. <laughs> Time for Atlantis to sink again. All right, here's another question. Does Frank have any input on using castor oil for health? Castor oil? Castor. 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 Oh, Oh, right, castor oil, right. (laughs) It has wonderful healing properties. Edgar Cayce, as you know, uses it for many, many things. And and what it does, it stimulates the cellular system stimulates individual cells by not only just what it does it, it adds elements of of um, of um, various nurturing things that are natural in 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 the plant world it, uh, it not only is it the lubricant, it it stimulates cells to to generate life force and to allow nurturing blood cells, blood to come into the cells or or whatever. However, they trans it helps it aids in the transmission process between the cell and the blood. Helps to lubricate or open portals. And in that nature, the whole system is stimulated, and it actually stimulates things like, like you know, white blood cells and leukocytes and things of that nature that can combat um, things internally. It was one of the major healing agents in, in the in the past because it it, it did work so well internally in our internal systems supplying nutrients that may not be available in our diet anymore also a secondary thing is it creates an aura an energetic aura uh, through the essence of its own properties its aura works directly with, with our beta energy systems the uh, subtle energy systems to stimulate the intent of the people using it so people using the castor oil their intent works directly in to achieve what it is they want, they, they want to have happen so it, you do well to hold your oil in your hand in a little little cup ceramic cup or something and inject your intent into that oil as you hold it between your both hands so you get the positive and negative to set the pattern of healing what you want to accomplish in it or whatever you want to accomplish with it and uh, 
that way, yeah, it can be very beneficial. Okay, so it is. Okay, so we've got a couple more rolling in here. Um, it always hots up towards the end of the hours. Um, so, uh, Chris's cats in Vermont last week with a gut barn cat disease and asper- respiratory problems were doing better by last Tuesday. They're all feeling better now, even the 15 year old cat, and thank you. Thanks to all for helping with healing. Well, you're very welcome. And then we've got, please clear all negative energies from Bill Brockbrader, who was released from jail <laughs> yesterday, or the day before yesterday, in fact. <laughs> As I've expressed in the past, Bill serves a function. And uh, the hell he goes through is the hell that he attracted by his opposition of the, of the opposition force and all of its aspects. And uh, yeah, we can send Bill energy, uh, but it's, it'll be more to, to sustain him than to heal his problems because as he works through his problems, He's drawing an awful lot of attention out there that does have a benefit, uh, in exposing the, those forces that would, that have deviled him for so many years now. So let's just send some life force to Bill. And as far as his problems were concerned, we leave it up to him to find the solutions. Okay. Very good. Close the bill. All right. Do we have anything else? Hmm. Well, anybody else in the in the um, in the think tank, the healers group? Um. I heard that Bill was was uh, molested when he was four years old. Oh, I don't want to go there. It's a whole oh. mess. Okay. Oh, well, I just wondered if you knew about that. Yeah, I know about it. Okay. So have, have we done anything with the uh, cat? Uh, well, nothing more. Uh, well, okay, we've got time. Let's work with Greenheart's cat. Chris's cat's in Vermont. With the barn cat disease, their respiratory problems are doing better by last Tuesday. So let's just wrap all those little kitties with love and the right and proper frequencies to help them overcome their diseases. And I want to send also in the term of cat rescue to my friend in New York that I've worked with for five years who rescued cats, Samantha, and give her cats energy. And let's just do a broad range of of healing. Send energy to all the people who nurse, nurse and nurture cats those people are inspired and have the unconditional love flow, the galactic flow resonate through their hands and they discover the art of healing by stroking and nurturing their cats when you pet a cat that's that's the reason they love to be petted so much is because of the energy they draw from you the empathy and love, and so we're also sending the frequencies of of good health and vitality to the cat. Okay, and so it is. Close. All right. My brain happy cat that's right next to me. Thanks you, Frank. All right. <laughs> I have something on healing. What is it when we think of healing? We want to be healed, and the next thing is we want others to be healed. 
So a while back, I kind of created, you could, I guess you could call it a mantra or a prayer or a thing, and it's simple. It's only three words. It's heal me, heal you. But here's the other part of it. I found as I got further into saying those words that they, depending on what I was feeling at the time, they would have a different pitch to it, a different tone. It was coming from maybe a different chakra. And that, that vi- there was a vibration that was getting created. And that as I said it faster and fat, or I explored what that, what healing is and, and, and opening up to light and, and new things and love. Exactly. That, you know, it, it gets incredible. It's just like, and just say those words. So, heal me, heal you, heal me, heal you, heal me, heal you, heal me. And before long, it just becomes a vibe. Heal me, heal you, heal me, heal you, heal me, heal you, heal me, heal you, or whatever. I mean, I'm just playing, you know, my voice is whatever, but well, you can do that with any words, because words are all vibrations. What your meaning is behind those words, there's your vibe. Love. Or, oh, here's some more, like, and they're words we, or sounds that we always have, like, mmm, that tastes good. Mmm, your body feels good when they make that sound. Or, ah. Or, or, you know, there's different sounds that go associated with good feelings. And those, so vibrations, to me, is a really good field to explore because that's what's behind everything, seems. Well, the words you speak are, are simply forming the intent into a cognizant resonance that you can utilize in your brain to accomplish things or to to rationally reason about things. The the frequencies of the words, of course, they all hold a, a, a specific vibration. Because when you sit, and this is how it works, it's, it's all manifestation. Everything you say or think or do is a manifestation. And words are a more directive, communicative manifestation that affects things outside of yourself as well as within yourself. And this is what the principle of, 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 oh, I lost the word, of, um, what's the word for when you say a long mantra? Mantras are, are, are simply expressions of intent. Repeated again and again and again, just like you were speaking about. And, and, uh, the neat thing about, uh, uh, a declaration or an intent or a affirmation, that's the word I was looking for, an affirmation. The most powerful aff- affirmation you can have is just two words, just like you mentioned. And because they are an expression of your desire and your will as intent. So the most powerful manifestation you can have is simply because what you're working with is, is a verb and a noun, a noun and a verb in informing and creating your thought. The noun being the, the, the subject to the idea of the ideal and the verb being the expression of what you want it to do. So the most powerful manifestation you can have is just two words. What it is and what you want it to do. Disease, go. Headache, go. And put as much power and energy as you can in that affirmation. And it will be more effective because the subconscious mind gets bogged down. If you try to overload it with too much verbiage, it's trying to make sense and sort out your intent. When really the full intent is just in those two words. Love come. Love heal. Well, all you loves, it's time to go. Till we meet again, 
We're with you always. Uh,